For a very long time, humans have imagined what life may be like on other worlds. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope in existence, that question can finally be explored. While observing the closest star system to us, Proxima Centauri, which is only four light years away, scientists have noticed some peculiar anomalies from one of the planets in the system, Proxima b. These anomalies, called artificial lights, have puzzled the best minds in the scientific community. But what are they? Do these lights suggest? 34 seconds. The existence of intelligent life on the planet? Join us as we explore the James Webb's terrifying discovery of city lights that could change everything. The only life that we are currently aware of is on Earth. Since the beginning of civilization, people have questioned whether there is life elsewhere in the universe. To carry out such an interstellar search, American astronomers Jill Tarter and Thomas Pearson launched the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, project in 1984. The non-profit's objective is to gather 1 minute and 6 seconds Space-borne radio signals Radio waves can travel farther and are therefore more likely to be detected by the 42 radio telescopes that make up the unique Allen Telescope Array in the California Cascade Mountains. However, in the past 30 years, no verifiable alien signal has been discovered. Following that, the James Webb Space Telescope's successful launch aided in the quest to examine a range of undiscovered planets orbiting distant stars. As the largest telescope in the world, floating roughly a million miles, 1 minute and 36 seconds, from Earth and outfitted with incredibly sensitive detectors, it has the potential to uncover significant findings. Twenty years ago, there were no known planets outside our solar system. But since then, more than 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered orbiting other stars. According to NASA, the universe may contain trillions of exoplanets. The earliest signs of life beyond our solar system may be found in extraterrestrial plant life. The Galileo spacecraft, on its route to Jupiter, turned its equipment back toward Earth and found a definite 2 minutes and 10 seconds indication of the presence of plants, detecting the vegetation red edge, VRE, biosignature, a mix of red and infrared light reflected by plants. For instance, a planet like Earth covered in jungle should have a strong and easily detectable VRE signal. The JWST will measure the VRE of far-off Earth-like planets in the habitable zone around stars, which could provide important signs of life in the exoplanet's atmosphere. When sunlight crosses a planet star, the JWST may be able to detect it as it enters its atmosphere. 2 minutes and 43 seconds. The missing wavelengths would then be discovered via spectroscopy. As atoms and molecules in the atmosphere absorb specific wavelengths, they create a characteristic fingerprint that the JWST can recognize. This method may be used to determine the composition of the atmosphere and whether life is possible. Life could exist on Earth-sized planets with atmospheres similar to our own, characterized by a predominance of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. By looking for elements that aren't usually present, one may be able to detect. 3 minutes and 16 seconds. Technological life. For example, Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, generated for use in refrigeration and cleaning products, would likely be noticeable to aliens monitoring Earth's atmosphere from a distance. If the JWST found CFCs in planetary atmospheres, that would be a clear indication of civilization. However, life on exoplanets might not resemble life on Earth at all. Sometimes, even earthly life forms, like extremophiles, species that can endure in environments where other living things would perish, can seem alien. This group, 3 minutes and 50 seconds, of organisms, primarily bacteria, can withstand extreme conditions such as heat up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or strong acid with pH levels below 1. Since planets like Earth are more likely to support life than those with severe temperatures or acidic conditions, it could be wise to start with those first. Prime candidates could have temperatures that allow liquid water to exist on their surfaces and orbit a stable star. Our Sun is classified as a yellow G-type star. These stars are less common and typically have shorter lifespans. However, in our 4 minutes and 25 seconds universe, the likelihood of studying planets orbiting red dwarf stars, which are more frequent and have lower luminosities and temperatures than the Sun, is higher. This extended time frame allows for the formation of life and evolution to produce complex life forms. Around 40 light-years away from Earth, 
The TRAPPIST-1 planetary system will be the subject of JWST's first mission. It revolves around a calm red dwarf star with seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Three of these rocky planets, located in the so-called habitable zone, might have 4 minutes and 58 seconds liquid water on their surfaces. Despite its smaller and colder mass compared to our Sun, the TRAPPIST-1 star radiates light that is similar to that of Earth. Due to the close orbit of its planets, the best chance for humans to see city lights outside the solar system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf star that is 4.25 light-years from the Sun Proxima is about 600 times fainter than the Sun, so a planet must be 20 times closer to it than Earth is to the Sun in order to support life based on liquid water. In 5 minutes and 29 seconds, August 2016, astronomers discovered a planet with 1.3 Earth masses in this habitable region, a Goldilocks-like habitable zone where the light intensity is just right to melt water. Proxima b orbits Proxima Centauri, but it is possible that Proxima b is an airless, lifeless planet, given that it orbits its red dwarf star at a distance of only 4.66 million miles. This close orbit exposes it to strong solar winds that can completely destroy its atmosphere. However, Proxima b does receive enough sunlight for temperatures and liquid. 6 minutes and 3 seconds. Water similar to those on Earth. Due to its close proximity to the star, Proxima b is thought to be tidally locked, always showing the same side to the star, much like the Moon does in relation to Earth. Proxima Centauri is about 18% the mass of the Sun and burns far less brightly than one might expect for a planet so near to its star. At just 5% of Earth-Sun distance, it may appear to be a red-hot cinder. Liquid water could exist on Proxima b as long as the planet has an atmosphere to hold in heat, since the 6 minutes and 34 seconds. Total energy reaching it from the Sun is only 65% of what Earth receives. However, the planet is not especially friendly to life. It is most likely tidally locked, meaning it always faces the same direction toward the star, producing permanent day and night sides with significant temperature changes. The planet also receives 100 times as much high-energy radiation as Earth does, including X-rays and ultraviolet light, due to its proximity to Proxima Centauri. Proxima is also bombarded with high-energy particles during star flare-ups. 7 minutes and 7 seconds. Unless it has a shielding magnetic field similar to Earth's, the conditions for life may not be favorable. Certain realistic conditions could potentially make Proxima be a more pleasant world. Sadly, models suggest that the atmosphere of tidally locked planets may be susceptible to rapid collapse due to the freezing out of volatile gases on the night side. Our planet's atmosphere can be replenished by volcanic activity, and for planets with strong magnetic fields, this atmosphere is less likely to escape. 7 minutes and 38 seconds. Since we don't know anything about Proxima b's volcanic activity or magnetic field strength, we can't even guess whether or not the planet has an atmosphere. However, since an atmosphere presupposes the existence of seas, and the two taken together presuppose the existence of life, we are desperate to know if Proxima b has a sophisticated civilization. It might have solar panels covering the day side to generate electricity to light and warm the night side, which would otherwise be too cold and dark for comfortable habitation. Duh. 8 minutes and 8 seconds. Discovery of Proxima b has triggered a race to determine if it crosses its star's face as seen from Earth. These transits would let scientists determine the planet's size and mass, which would enable them to assess its density and validate the planet's rocky makeup, providing information on the materials used to create those rocks. During a transit, starlight might disclose the nature of the planet by passing through its atmosphere. However, the likelihood that the orbit will be in the right alignment for scientists to see a 8 minutes and 38 seconds. Transit is merely 1.5%. The star's propensity to flare also complicates matters. Astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University says the star is tricky, as stellar heat causes a rocky planet to absorb sunlight and re-emit it as infrared light. However, rocky planets produce a distinct type of infrared radiation from stars like Proxima Centauri. Additionally, the James Webb Space Telescope was created specifically to study infrared light. Proxima b's infrared heat signature is the key to identifying the planet's atmosphere. 9 minutes and 11 seconds. Moreover, the infrared portion of the spectrum has a strong affinity for Hubble's successor, which may allow the JWST to observe city lights on Proxima's night side, even if they are as faint as those currently employed on Earth.
the JWST could detect artificial illumination as long as it is constrained to a frequency band that is 1,000 times narrower than the star's light. Proxima B's day side may be heavily coated with solar panels, reflecting starlight. As Proxima B revolves around its star, day and night are identical. 9 minutes and 43 seconds, with cool evening lows following warm midday highs. If the light curves from these two versions of Proxima B differ, the amount of daylight received from the day side compared to the amount of light produced from the night side will give scientists a clear indication that the source of the energy is technological. And if those lights are artificial, they're not from us. This leads us to one of the most fascinating possibilities of all, that artificial illumination on Proxima B, if confirmed, could be definitive proof of an intelligent alien. 10 minutes and 13 seconds. Civilization. To differentiate between natural and artificial sources of light, scientists examine a planet's light curve or how its brightness changes over time. If the brightness on the planet's night side doesn't match what would naturally occur from reflected starlight alone, it could suggest that the light is man-made, or rather, alien-made. If Proxima B's day side reflects sunlight due to large-scale installations such as solar panels, and its night side emits a consistent glow, the JWST could detect. 10 minutes and 44 seconds. This discrepancy. Artificial lighting would have a unique spectral signature, meaning it would emit light at certain wavelengths that nature doesn't typically produce. Streetlights, for instance, often emit in very specific bands of visible or infrared light. Moreover, if the light levels on Proxima B's night side remain constant regardless of the planet's rotation or orbit, it may strongly imply the presence of a technological society managing their environment, something no natural process would cause. These artificial 11 minutes and 16 seconds. Lights could be used to support life on the dark side of the planet, compensating for the absence of sunlight due to tidal locking. This concept isn't just science fiction anymore. It's a genuine scientific hypothesis that's being tested with the tools at our disposal today. The idea that we could observe the glow of alien cities from across the stars was once just the stuff of imagination. Now, with telescopes like the JWST, it's become a real possibility. Still, the search continues with caution. Detecting light doesn't automatically. 11 minutes and 48 seconds. Confirm intelligent life. It merely opens the door to further investigation. Other explanations must be ruled out. Could it be geothermal activity? An unusual atmospheric phenomenon? Even rare mineral reflections? Scientists must eliminate all plausible natural causes before turning to the extraterrestrial explanation. And even if we do find signals that seem artificial, the implications are enormous. It would mean we're not alone. That somewhere in the galaxy, perhaps just four light years away, there's a civilization advanced. 12 minutes and 22 seconds. Enough to harness energy, build infrastructure, and light up their world. This discovery would redefine our understanding of biology, technology, and perhaps even our place in the cosmos. The James Webb Space Telescope is not just a tool for astronomers, it's a time machine, a mirror, and a beacon pointing toward the unknown. As it continues scanning the universe, it brings us closer to answering one of humanity's oldest and most profound questions. Are we alone? If those city lights… The scientific community is already buzzing with debates, not just about the nature of the lights, but about the moral and existential implications of discovering intelligent life. Would we risk transmitting a signal in return? announcing our presence to whoever, or whatever, might be watching? Or would we maintain silence, observing quietly from afar, as cautious explorers peering into a cosmic forest? International coalitions have begun drafting contingency plans. The United Nations has quietly convened panels of scientists, ethicists, philosophers, and even theologians. Questions once confined to science fiction are now being discussed in official policy meetings. What rights would alien beings have? How would we communicate? Could their biology or technology pose a risk to Earth? And what would this mean for global religions, philosophies, and the narratives that shape human identity? Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope continues its mission. Over several months, scientists collect more light curve data from Proxima b, meticulously charting the variations and refining their models. With each passing day, the patterns become clearer. The glow from the night side of the planet doesn't flicker or shift randomly like natural phenomena. It pulses steadily, like the regulated rhythm of a city grid. Then, one day, something new happens. 
A brief flicker, just a few milliseconds long, registers in the data. A flash, perfectly timed, not chaotic but deliberate. Analysts scramble to verify it. It happens again the next night, and again the one after that. It's not a reflection, nor a flare. It's a sequence. A code. Some kind of modulation. The idea takes root. This may be a signal. Not just light, but language. And if that's true, if someone on Proxima B is trying to talk to us, then humanity stands at the brink of first contact. Not in theory, not in myth, but in real, data-driven certainty. The night sky, once cold and silent, now hums with possibility.